All right, good morning and welcome to the FRA launch webinar series. Um, today I am here with Clint Adams. Um, Clint is currently serves as the Executive Vice President and CFO at Ardent Health Services. Um, he has over 25 years of accounting and healthcare experience. Previously, he was an audit senior manager for Ernst & Young, and he also served as controller for Path Group, Inc., and was an audit manager and staff accountant for Deloitte. Mr. Adams is a certified public accountant and is a member of the Healthcare Financial Management Association. Um, Clint, thank you so much for joining us and your willingness to share your expertise. We're so excited to have you. Thank you, Betsy. Yeah, so um, let's just kind of jump in here. Can you tell me a little bit about your current role and then maybe kind of walk us through some of the path that led you there? Sure, so uh, obviously the CFO, I'm responsible for the numbers. I'm a numbers guy. Sure. Um, and, you know, really it, it's, it's focused on making sure that we use our assets wisely, our resources wisely make sure we have good controls, we can put out good financial statements, uh, we have banks and owners and board members that want to make sure when they see our numbers that they're correct. So that's kind of it in a, in a really high level nutshell. Uh, the only other thing I would mention is uh, we're a pretty high growth company. We've doubled the size of the company in the last two or three years. So I spend a lot of my time or I have spent a lot of my time um, helping the company grow, doing due diligence and financing those those acquisitions. Yeah, so um, kind of take us back just a little bit. And it sounds like you know you've been a lot of different places, a lot of a lot of big name companies um, as well. But um, what do you see personally as kind of your your big break or where you really found your passion for the type of work that you would end up doing? Yeah, I would say. Um, Maybe going back to, to college, I, I really enjoyed numbers. I was really good at math. Mm -hmm. And I had a professor that asked me, hey, you really should think about accounting. And uh, so I, I did and figured out I, I really enjoyed it. But I also figured out it was a good way to, to get a job, uh, frankly. Uh, accountants uh, usually can find a job. And they can uh, end up spreading their wings and doing things other than accounting. Obviously, I don't do much accounting anymore. Um, and in terms of a big break, um, it, it, a little bit of an interesting topic. When I first came to Ardent, so I, I left EMY, Ernst & Young, because I wanted to, to get into to industry and the healthcare business. Not long after I got there, uh, we identified our financials were wrong. And we had public debt. And that is not a good situation because the SEC uh, wants to know why your numbers were wrong. And so I spent probably the next year of, of my career really unwinding this situation that was from several years past. And, you know, it, it's not something I would ever want to do again because it was a very high stress, um, tight deadline environment. But what it did do, is it, it gave me the opportunity to talk to the audit committee and the board and our CEO literally every day as, as we were trying to unravel this, this issue. And it, it gave them a chance to see me in a high stress situation. I was suddenly managing a significant number of individuals trying to, to figure this situation out. So, you know, it was, um, it was not something I would wanna do again, other than it, it, I really do believe it, it advanced my career because they got to know who I was and what I could do in a really difficult situation. So my advice to anybody out there would be don't hesitate to jump into the fray sometimes because people will notice what you can do and, and how that can advance your career if you want to. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, I think that's a great point about you know, taking a tough situation and one that you're really not prepared for and um, yeah. using it, using it to, you know, promote your career, um, though that probably wasn't your thought at the time, um, but it definitely yeah. lent itself to that. So speaking of, is there anything that you kind of just look back on now, maybe in the midst of that or in the midst of something else um, that you were really worried about and you kind of wonder now why you gave it so much, so much headspace and heart space and that you worried about it? You know, probably not, um, you know, in that situation, I was, I was 
probably more focused on um, trying to get to the to the answer more than anything else, not so much worried. But you know, one thing I, I do I do recall early in my career is you know you you see people around you get opportunities that maybe you should have gotten or you feel like you should have gotten. And, and eventually I realized I need to stop worrying about what somebody else is getting the opportunity to do and really just focus on what can I do? What, what good things can I do? Um, but otherwise, you know, admittedly, I'm just not, I'm not a big warrior, which I guess is a good thing. I think that's definitely a good thing, especially in a position of leadership, right? Like, I mean, it's nice to have somebody that's calm at the, you know, yeah. at the helm there. Um, yeah. What is a piece of advice um, other than that, which is great advice, um, that you maybe received once upon a time that still either impacts your work or your personal life? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably mention two. It's hard to narrow it down to one. Yeah, of course. Bunch, but, you know, the first thing would be uh, surround yourself with really smart people. Um, I've seen a lot of people get into a leadership position and, and they're worried about the individuals below them outshining them and it, it, that just is a recipe for failure so I, I've really taken to heart when somebody told me surround yourself with really smart people and let them do what they can do and let them know they can challenge you because I think where you ultimately end up is is making decisions getting input from a team is is going to be a better decision than than you thinking you you have to know everything by yourself and then the other one was when I first got promoted to, to CFO, I had a board member set me down and say, Clint, you're, what you do every day is going to change. You're, you're not the controller anymore. You're the CFO. He said, you need to sit down every day and ask yourself, are you spending your time where you need to be spending it? Make yourself think about that. And it sounds so simple, but I still do it every day. It's been 11 or 12 years and um, you'll find yourself spending your time where you don't need it. And it's a, such a limited valuable resource. It's just a good test every day. Yeah, absolutely. That's great advice. Um, is there an important lesson that you've learned either the easy way or the hard way that you would like to share with the FRA community? Um, so that, you know, Maybe they don't repeat the mistake, or maybe it's it was a good lesson that you learned that you think would be helpful to. Um, you know, I think, gosh, a lesson learned. Um, you know, I think more than anything else, just focus on doing a really good job. Be willing to work hard, have a great attitude, and be a good team player. There's probably two or three lessons buried inside of that, but. Um, Business does not happen as a group of individuals. And so be very willing to, to work with other teams, even though they may not be in your area of the business. Ultimately, our, our paycheck does not have an individual's name on it. It has a company name on it. And we're trying to do the best we can for that company. So I'd say work hard, have a great attitude, and be a really good teammate would be my advice. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, how has your work been impacted during this time of um, some say social distancing? I am trying to focus on the physical distancing and you know that we yeah. can still stay socially connected, but um, how are how are you tackling things in new ways in your industry? Yeah, so interestingly, we're we're in the hospital business mm -hmm. and we we actually have two hospitals that are bedroom communities of New York City. So um, you know, we're getting a a front row view of just how bad uh, the pandemic is. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are struggling to, to get to work and do their job and worried about being sick. And we've had people get sick doing their job. So, you know, one, what we're trying to do as a corporate headquarters is, is support our clinicians or our employees in the field uh, to make sure they have what they need to do their job. And it, uh, it's, it's a different feeling, you know, than, than normal, what you're trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So a lot of times you feel like you're not doing enough for them. You know, we're trying to get enough supplies and paying way too much for supplies, but we're going to pay it because they need to wear those masks and gowns. 
And then the other thing is we, we essentially have nobody in our corporate office. And so we're doing a lot of Zooms and WebEx and uh, meetings because it, it's, uh, it's so much better to, to see a face and, and it, it's as close as we're going to get to being connected right now. That's for sure. So that's probably the biggest two things. Yeah, we're definitely seeing some of that too. That FaceTime is just completely yeah. different now. Um, we're all Zoom famous and lifestyle bloggers, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. anything though, as you, as you kind of think about moving ahead, um, a lot of people are trying to, you know, focus on some of the positive pieces of this. And I'm certain that in your field, that probably is, you're, you're seeing a lot of the tough stuff. Is there yeah. anything from this time that you think that you might, carry forward or lessons that you've had a chance to reflect upon that you might take forward, hopefully as this, as we move in back into a new normal? Yeah, I think, you know, one thing is, is just the whole telecommuting, you know, there's a, we've got a lot of employees that live, you know, almost to Kentucky on the North side, or, you know, they live 45 minutes to an hour away, Murfreesboro. And, you know, I'm kind of an old dog. I've not been a big fan of telecommuting, uh, but but we have started to do it over the last few years. And this is, a, I mean, think about it, this is a crash course in telecommuting. We have essentially told people, don't come to the office. And what I've realized, being the old dog who didn't like it, was our people are still really productive. They're you know not happy with the situation, but I, I think they're happy that they're not having to drive 45 minutes and then worry about being sick. So... I think this is going to really change, not just Ardent. I think it really will change the way business happens and, and convince people that, hey, telecommuting really does work well. And, and the tools that we can use, I think, are really good. But I think they're going to get a lot better now that everybody's realized that I think this can work. Yeah. So you mentioned old dog. I don't know about old dog, but um, in terms of someone who does have, you know, 25 years of healthcare and accountant experience and financial and for our students who are um, maybe in, in high school and or about to graduate or might be, you know, good with numbers and interested in that. Mm -hmm. what, is a, what is a piece of advice or something that you might give them as they, they seek to pick a major in that type of area? You know, clearly I'm biased because I, I have an accounting degree. Um, but I, I think if you, I, I've taken the view that if you're interested in business, uh, first off today, you're going to have to get a, a master's degree at some point. I, most people will end up with a master's degree in business. But if you're going to get a degree in the business world, I, I think accounting will give you a lot more options than just a finance degree or a business administration degree. And if you want to go back and get your MBA or your master's in health administration, you can always do that. But I've always seen, and, and when I was in the public accounting world, I was heavily involved in recruiting. And the, the options that you have with an accounting degree are, they seem to me to be so much more than finance is a little bit narrower focus. So that would be, my take on why you would stick it out with accounting because it's probably the hardest undergraduate business degree when you line them all up and it, it doesn't lend itself to, to those that don't want to work hard, but it really pays off because you'll have so many more options in life um, from my point of view. Awesome. Um, I think that's great advice. Um, and I really appreciate, this has been a really interesting conversation for me and for, you know, kind of considering your field and considering your lens. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with the FRA community or any final words um, you have? You know, I, yeah, there, there is one thing and it, it really gets to um, kids today. There's a lot of shows out there that give somebody's view of what business is and most of them aren't very good you know they're highly dysfunctional unethical not a lot of morals and I, I would just tell them there may be some companies out there like that but there are a lot of companies out there that um, are very ethical they're very compassionate and they respect their employees and treat their employees well 
And I feel blessed to be at a company that, that values that. So I would just tell them, don't always think business is a bunch of really bad guys that don't care about people. Um, I'm a finance person and in our board meetings, we talk about people and quality and service more than we talk about our numbers. Because if we can't do those three things, we're not going to be successful. So one, don't think business is, is like that. And then two, when you get into the, to the business world, try to find a place that is like that because it'll, it'll make your, your personal life and your professional life a whole lot more fun. That would be what I would tell them. Um, so I'm going to ask one follow-up question to that because I think yeah. that's incredible advice. As you have made moves, what do you see as an indicator that that is at the root of a company? And again, um, I, that might be a very complex question, but for you maybe in partners, what are, what are some things that you would look for, say you were moving now in a company that they might be able to demonstrate or communicate from the, from the start and from the, you yeah. know, the off, outset? You know, I think there's a lot of things. One, do your homework, know who the executives are and have they, have they given examples that they can demonstrate that they're going to lead by example and, and be that kind of, of organization. But I tell you, I've walked into a lot of businesses and when you walk, walk around and you're seeing all the employees standing around or sitting around, how many of them look up at you? How many of them smile? Do you hear talking? Do you hear laughing? Are they congregating in certain places? And I don't know if you can always find the time to do that. But in my experience, I've walked into places and people are afraid to look up from their desk or nobody's talking or laughing. That, that could tell you something. Because, um, I, I mean, I, I can be a really serious person. You could ask my son. I'm a really serious person. But I like to laugh. I like to, to joke and have fun and um, make fun of people in a light way to poke at them. Just, you know, it's life's too short. So I think you can pick up on it if you, if you really look at it. Well, thank you very much. Um, I really have enjoyed the conversation. I've gained a lot from it and I'm certain that our students and our families will as well. So um, thank you for being with us, for sharing your time. Um, I wish you the best of luck um, and for your company sort of in, in the days ahead. All right, I appreciate it, Betsy, thank you. Absolutely, have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Uh -huh.